An online sale takes a scary turn for a woman after police say someone fired shots at her car. A fire destroys a family's home in Jackson County. And tonight we're learning about a wreck that killed one person and sent several others to the hospital with serious injuries. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 6. Crash reconstruction crews work throughout the night and into the early morning. Good evening. I'm Kristen Kennedy. One person is dead and three others injured after a fiery crash on I-75 in Madison County this weekend. The multi-car wreck happened last night near the 96-mile marker. WKYT's Hillary Thornton says deputies are pretty confident they now know the cause of the wreck. Interstate 75 in Madison County near the Fayette County line is moving as normal after being closed for several hours. Madison County Sheriff's deputies say around 9:30 Saturday night they were called out to I-75 southbound near the 96 mile marker for a crash involving two vehicles. Those first on the scene say one of the vehicles was sitting in the middle lane while the other vehicle, a van only occupied by its driver, a 41-year-old man was on fire in the grassy area off the right shoulder. Deputies say the man was still inside that burning van when they arrived on scene and was then transported to University of Kentucky Hospital with severe burns where he later died. Investigators tell us there were three people in that car that collided with the van, a mother and two children ages 12 and 5. Officials say they were all also taken to UK hospital. We are told the mother and 12-year-old boy have multiple life-threatening injuries while the five-year-old girl's injuries are minor. Officials have identified all those involved but are not releasing their names at this time. In Madison County, Hillary Thornton, WKYT. The Sheriff's Office handled the investigation. Kentucky State Police helped with collision reconstruction. Southeastern and some parts of central Kentucky saw rain today. Expect those overcast skies and precipitation to stick around in the work week. WKYT's Mike Linden joins us now with a first look at the forecast. Well, that's right, Kristen. A soggy end to the final weekend of 2014. It's also cloudy, cold. We hit our high temperatures pretty early this morning as well. So it certainly was a lazy Sunday for most if you just wanted to enjoy the day, really. It was just a pleasant day to stay inside. We're still seeing more rain at this hour, most of which is over southern and southeastern Kentucky. We take a look at Pulaski County and the southern quarter of I-75. That's where we're seeing most of the consistent rainfall. That's pushing eastward as well into the southeastern mountains. Morgan County as well, seeing more of that wet weather. And again, that's pushing northward into spots like Rowan County. Visibility also quite low. Someone out on Facebook just reached out to me and told me that in Bourbon County, she can't even see the trees in her backyard. And right now in Fayette County, the visibility down near about three tenths of a, of a mile. So the visibility is rather low right now. Take it easy if you're going to be hitting the roads. But nonetheless, it looks like the forecast is just going to continue to stay cloudy and cold overnight tonight, more than likely sliding back to the freezing range, which, if that does indeed happen, instead of the showers, we could see some flurries overnight tonight, but that case hangs true into Monday as well. I'll show you exactly what I'm tracking for the remaining days of 2014 coming up. Kristen? Mike, they say they could see flames shooting from the home. Fire crews say a Saturday night fire destroyed a house in Jackson County. We're told the family was out getting medicine for their child when the fire started. WKYT Sean Moody talked to the fire chief who says crews had a difficult time putting it out. The chief of the Pond Creek Fire and Rescue Department said the flames were probably burning for 45 minutes or so before someone noticed and called it in around 8.30 Saturday night. When crews got here, he said there wasn't much they could do. The fire was burning from one end to the other. Flames were shooting through the roof approximately 50 feet high, you know, through the roof. The fire had already gone so far that we knew it was a total loss to start with. Chief Larry Bowling said his volunteer firefighters worked to contain the flames to the mobile home, making sure it didn't spread. We have some well-trained volunteers. They do a real good job. I, I'm proud of them. He said a young couple live in the home with a young child. He said they'd gone out to get medicine for the child when they got the call that their home was burning. You could just imagine how devastating it would be to receive the news that your home's on fire while you're out picking up medicines for your child. Now, the chief said they did face some challenges in trying to fight this fire. They had to get their equipment up this driveway, and the chief says it's pretty steep. He estimates about a 30 degree climb. It is graveled, it, you know, it's got humps and bumps in it. And where it had been raining, 
it was slick. We honestly didn't think we was going to get our trucks up here because they spun out several times. Getting water into the area was also a concern. We're not locating near any hydrant, so we had to truck our water into it. So that, that always presents a problem when you have to truck water into it. Bowling said the fire is still under investigation, but their preliminary cause is electrical. He said the people who live here are staying with family nearby. In Jackson County, Sean Moody, WKYT. The Pond Creek Volunteer Firefighters worked another fire a few hours later. They say a camper sitting next to a house caught fire. A sale that started with a post through social media today put one woman in a scary situation. Lexington Police say a woman tried to sell her cell phone by posting about it on a Facebook yard sale page. She was supposed to meet up with the buyer at the Days Motel on Versailles Road, and police say the buyer tried to rob her and fired shots at her when she tried to get away. WKYT's Jordan Valines talked to police who have a word of warning for people buying and selling items online. This afternoon, a couple from out of town met up with two women who they didn't know in order to purchase a cell phone from them. But they quickly learned once arriving at the hotel that the women had no intention of selling them anything. Police say the victims met the women through a Facebook yard sale page and agreed to meet at the motel on Versailles Road in order to buy the cell phone. We're told that the transaction then took a turn for the worse when the suspects demanded money from the victims. After that, the couple tried to run away by jumping into their SUV, but the suspects ran after them, shooting three bullets in the direction of their vehicle. Police say this is yet another example of how important it is to take extra precautions when buying and selling things from strangers. First and foremost, it's it's a buy at your own risk, and there is a lot of risk when you uh, begin meeting people that you don't know and then exchanging money with people you don't know. Um, these types of robberies, unfortunately, happen pretty often. The suspects are described as two women, one of them about six feet tall wearing a red hoodie, the other one around five feet tall. In Lexington, Jordan Valines, WKYT. Those victims were not injured. A central Kentucky family said goodbye to their daughter today. Visitation for Amber Cottle was this morning at Hearn Funeral Home in Stanton. Winchester police say someone fired shots Tuesday night during a home invasion at an apartment complex where Cottle lived. One of the bullets went through the floor and killed her. Her funeral will be tomorrow. Lexington police are trying to track down a man they say robbed a Subway restaurant. Police tell us around 11 this morning, a masked man walked into the Subway on Waller Avenue, said he had a weapon and demanded cash. Police describe him as a 20-year-old black man weighing about 150 pounds, wearing a black sweatshirt, black pants, and black shoes. Lexington police say a man is recovering tonight after he showed up to the hospital with a gunshot wound early this morning. Around 2 o'clock, police went out to Camelot East over on Richmond Road after hearing reports of shots fired. About an hour later, police say a man showed up at St. Joseph's Hospital with a gunshot wound to the leg. The man told police he was standing in the bathroom of the club when another man dropped a gun and the gun accidentally went off. We're told the man has non-life-threatening injuries. An Indonesian airliner carrying 162 people is still missing tonight. Search and rescue crews spent the morning combing the Java Sea for any signs of the missing plane. Mary Maloney explains the circumstances surrounding Air Asia Flight 8501's disappearance. Early Sunday morning, Air Asia Flight 8501, with 162 people on board, vanished as it flew over the Java Sea. It left an airport in Indonesia at about 5.30 local time and was expected to arrive in Singapore about three hours later. It never did. Obviously, it's a desperately difficult time for the relatives. Uh, Air Asia Indonesia has said that they're doing all they can to try and keep them up to date with what is happening. But quite frankly, at this point, they don't know what has happened. About an hour before the plane was scheduled to land, there seemed to be a problem. The airline says the pilot wanted to change the planned flight route because of weather. Then communication with the plane was lost. There was very turbulent weather across that region at the last point of contact for Air Asia Flight 8501. People from five nations were on board Indonesia, South Korea, Malaysia, Singapore, and France. Of those passengers, 16 kids and one infant. 
According to the flight manifest, 23 people booked on the flight didn't show. The Malaysia-based airline is popular in the region for having low fares and a good safety record. Air Asia says the plane underwent scheduled maintenance just last month. It's a low-cost airline. It, it operates. It's very popular, and um, you know the safety record, especially in Indonesia or Asia, is uh, very strong. As crews search for the plane and any survivors, the CEO of Air Asia tweeted, "Thank you for all of your thoughts and prayers. We must stay strong." I'm Mary Maloney, reporting. Intelligent leaders have President Obama on the planes. Have briefed President Obama on the plane's disappearance. The White House will continue to monitor those developments.